Before we get started, let's put some gloves and a bottle on our hands for studio safety. Hi, I'm Mike Rooney. Today's free art lesson is on how to darken color without adding its complement, which kills the color. So what we want to do is we want to have shadows, we want them really, really colorful, but we don't want to have dead color. Now, you remember back when you were in, in school and they tell you paint an apple and take, uh, let's say the apple's red, take green, which is the exact opposite on the color wheel, and make a shadow out of that. But what it does is that green is the exact opposite of red on the color wheel. It kills the color. So you don't get good, clean, you know, bright color in the shadows. You get this dull thing, kind of like adding black paint. So I'm going to show you how to, how to make it look like it's in shadow and still be nice and bright and colorful because we're all striving for nice, bright, colorful paintings. So let's go over to the easel and I'll show you how to do it. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint some boxes like we're, like we're trying to describe a box. And let's go ahead and make this really washy. And we're going to do them a little bit. I'm going to do them about this size right here. So here's one box. Now, now remember, I'm not trying to draw a nice box. I'm just trying to show how to do the color. So here's the second box. And it goes down like that. And let's say that, that the shadow runs off this way, like so and like so. Like it's two different two different boxes and here's the tabletop along the like two boxes sitting on the table okay now let's go over here and paint the first side yellow let's just pick up a lot of nice yellow and paint the first side of the box yellow alright now they told us to add a little bit of white when we were in school, add a little bit of white to the top, to the yellow, and paint it on the top, and that you'll have something that looks like the box is lighter on top. So I'm going to do another lesson, a little art lesson, show you how to not add white to it and still make it look like it's in the light without adding all that pasty white to it. But I'm going to do it for right now because that's that's how most of us know how to do it. So now we'll go over here and we'll put the yellow in on this side and we're going to add purple to it. It's complement which is kind of the red apple green shade thing that, that uh, we always use. That's how we make a shadow, isn't it? Okay, so, so here's the yellow. Let's take purple and I'm, I've got ultramarine uh, violet on my palette right here is ultramarine violet. I'm going to take some of that ultramarine violet and put it right on top of that yellow. And look how gray and lifeless that already looks. Well, you may say, well, it doesn't look lifeless to me. It looks like a nice shadow. But when you see this one, it, you're going to see the difference. So there it is. There's a nice shadow, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now we're going to come over here and make a tabletop. We're going to add light blue across the, t across the tabletop. So here's the Here's the light blue on the tabletop. Another good lesson, a little mini lesson in a lesson is you see that yellow like trying to wash out of my brush? That's why I'm getting I'm not getting good clean blue over here because some of that green's washing out. Another good reason for washing your brushes out really good in between colors, which I'm not doing. I'm just dipping it in there and swishing it around but you know you're not going to have good clean color if you don't uh, wash your brush out in between colors like if you're mixing red and you don't wash all that red out of there when you go to mix green trees red is the opposite of green you're killing your color so be sure that when you change colors that you for sure wash the brush out really really well so now I'm going to take blue and make this look like it's in shadow and we always you know how did we always previously to this lesson, how did we darken blue? We always took uh, orange and darkened down blue. Like if we didn't like it, it was too, it was not dark enough, we take orange and put it in there on top of the blue, like so. Alright, so you know, you look at that and you say, Mike, what's wrong with that? 
I'm liking that pretty good. Well, you won't when you look at this other one. We take yellow, we put it on the next one. Make sure we stay out of that magenta. For some reason, I always like to draw with magenta. It just, it's just a really cool, it, may, it reminds me, I guess, to stay really bright and colorful when I'm painting. I can always get rid of parts of it if I want, but I leave a lot of it peeking out in my paintings. And so, okay, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna paint the, the yellow there, but instead of adding violet, which you know that, that here's yellow on the color wheel, you know that directly down from red and blue is purple. So if you mix ye yellow with purple, it's its exact opposite down here. That's purple, it's supposed to be purple. Let's put real purple on there. That's purple. That's the exact opposite on the color wheel. You don't want that. What can we do to get this to look like it's in shadow and turn is you don't go straight across, you start working your way down to it, okay? So what's the um, middle, or what's the secondary color if you mix yellow and red is red, yellow with a touch of red, you get orange. Now look at that, there's orange and there's red. So let's add a little orange to this instead of going straight across, let's add orange to it first. And then add, let's add just a tad of red. See, I'm working my way across. I'm working my way down. I put a little red in there. And then I take a little bit of red's complement. So you go this way and then straight across. So, so no, no, not red's complement, orange's complement. I'm gonna take this orange. I added just a tad of red in it, but I'm still gonna say that this orange complement is blue. Long as it's not purple, you'll be okay. So I'm gonna add just a smidge of blue into this to kill that red, it's too, or, or that orange, it's too bright and too intense. So watch how I kill it just a little bit. I pick up a little bit of blue, make sure I don't have much of it. Just a touch, wash out real good so I don't get any more blue in there because if I don't wash that blue, I'll have tons of it. I'm gonna take that blue and swish that blue around just enough to kill that real bright orange. Now see how that blue just killed that orange a little bit. Wow. Look at the difference. It still looks like it's in shade. Now we're gonna, let's make the top. I forgot to do the top. We'll take the top and we'll make the top look like it's being lit up. All right, there's the lit up side of the box. So there's the yellow and there's the orange. And look at the difference between this one and that one. Now let's do the light blue and blue and watch the difference between that. We take light blue here, we scoop it on there. Oh, that's the key to working on this thing is just pick it up like crazy and scoop it on there. There we go. Okay. I like to paint with lots of paint. Okay, and then we take blue now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take blue and lighten it a little bit. We're gonna put some blue on there. Now watch, instead of taking blue, remember on, on the blue, I took blue and I added orange, which was its complement. Orange, blue, is I'm gonna add purple. So I'm taking blue, here's blue, and I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. I'm gonna go this way with it, because I don't want it to get lighter and warmer, I want it to get cooler. So I can add purple versus going from, per from blue straight over to orange, because it'll kill it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of purple in there and watch how that keeps it dark, but it keeps it really, really colorful, really bright. See how the purple now I put a little bit closer up to the box and let it fade as it goes that way. And look how, more, how much more colorful this one is than that, but they both, when you squint, they both look like they're in shadow. All right, I hope this has helped you to keep your shadows really, really colorful without adding their complement. It drops the color and it also keeps it very, very bright. Um, you can, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and you can find more of my stuff on MikeRooneyStudios.blogspot.com.